So let's say a very good morning to Greg Rust and Greg Murphy. Uh, Jess, good morning. The boys didn't help you much. They were very quiet there when you gave an excellent explanation of the progressive format today to set the grid for tomorrow's Wilson Security Sandown 500. So two races coming up today, one for co-drivers and one for the main game pilots. And right now we are focused on armour all qualifying for the second tier of the sport, the Dunlop Series. And this is one of just three rounds left in the race for the 2016 title, Greg Murphy. And we've seen all sorts of different pole sitters throughout the year. Jack LeBrock, very good at the last round at Townsville. He had a pole at Phillip Island as well. Andrew Jones had one in WA. Todd Hazelwood started the year at home where he grew up in Adelaide on the streets there uh, with a pole position, along with Gary Jacobson, teammate to the series leader who you ride with here, Jack LeBrock. So it's going to be a fantastic end of the year. 900 points still up for grabs and only 51 separating LeBrock and Jacobson in the race for the crown. Yeah, no question. It's still wide open, isn't it? There's uh, lots and lots of points, lots of great formats still to come as well when we get to Bathurst and then the final. It's uh, Homebush, but uh, the guy on camera, he's already amassed four pole positions in a pretty short period of time. And... We've, uh, as we go on board with Jack LeBrock, he just looks uh, so calm and collected, enjoying this race car, which really seems to suit his style. And you, know, you just watch how smooth and calm he is on the wheel. I mean, is he even hanging on to that steering wheel? He's got like his thumbs <laughs> through the, the area there where you, where you sort of hang on. And he doesn't even look like his hands are gripping it too tight. He's got his, his now famous green uh, tennis uh, tennis racket grip stuff on his steering wheel and he's uh, just doing a bit of a warm-up he'll head to the pits and get a new set of tires on board the go get a falcon and then head back out and try to set the time here on a beautiful day in melbourne sun shining as you can hear there was sam potter who is the data engineer for mark winterbottom in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, but he's the main oh. engineer for LeBron as we watched Umbrell. Umbrell run off. Ventures into the gravel trip down Daniel Road, turn nine. A bit of gravel on the bonnet of the Eagleston Motorsport car, and then uh, send him to the lane to clear the radiator duct and the brake ducts as well. Just trying to look at his tyres and health. I'm pretty sure he was probably on a, a warm up set, maybe as well, but that's not a great way to start the session at all. But it carries on actually. A little surprised there. It took a bit of a dive into the the gravel trap. And he's um, decided to carry on as uh, Jacobson looks to come back out onto the track. Rihanna Crean's operating in pit lane for us. Might be interesting to know from the Eggleston camp whether he is on new rubber. They only get two sets of new hard tyres for this qualifying session and for the three races. Well, they look over pretty the weekend good. Uh, they, at Sandown. They, yeah, they the, yellow, the yellow there on the sides looks quite quite fresh, doesn't it? Uh, which is delineating also that the, it's the hard tyre, the yellow Dunlop on the sidewall says it's the hard. The white that's on the supercars this weekend and the main game is delineates the soft. So those tyres do look quite good if we're referencing the, the strength of the colour on the sidewall there. So there's Taz Douglas' teammate. Had a word to him just a moment ago in the dummy grid area before they headed out for qualifying. This is the first time all year that he's been in the same race car for consecutive race meetings. He's been moving around all different kind of cars. He competes in the Kumo series as well and did a test recently with Paul Dumbrell, which helped immensely. He's gone fastest with a 1.10.89 as we say good morning to Rihanna Green. Yeah, good morning, guys. I just wanted to uh, confirm with you. I just checked with Rachel Wagg, team owner of Eggleston Motorsport. Paul Dumbrell did go out on green tyres, so that's probably why he went and continued on with that lap. Wow, that's uh, not a good way to start it. I hope he didn't get it too many marks on the, on those tyres, but uh, he'll gather it up. Obviously trying very, very hard the first first lap there, down under brakes into turn nine, maybe didn't get enough temperature. It's The sun's shining, but the wind is blowing quite strong out there, Rusty, and there wouldn't be a lot of temperature on that track right now, so maybe just didn't build enough temperature on that warm-up lap before he uh, had a crack at it. That was the fear for Todd Hazelwood. He said the, the change of wind direction today, he said, don't be surprised as the session goes on if we see people venturing off down at turn one, that'll affect your, your braking. Andrew Jones is currently the fastest on a 110.30. 
I reckon we saw quicker times yesterday. Yeah, we did. Anton Di Pasquale second fastest. McCauley Jones is third. Then Paul Dumbrell, who you're watching here at the moment in car 88. Remember, Dumbrell will pair up with Jamie Wincup in the Wilson Security Sandown 500 again tomorrow. And they're a very good combo. So Dumbrell. It's the pits on a 10-8, so there's a lot of time to be found. They were into the nines yesterday in practice. So Jack LeBrock uh, controlling the field yesterday. Doing a good job. So there's a fair bit of time, but as I say, there's, it's a very different day. And the circuit uh, would have had a you know, significant change from yesterday when they were out there. We were comparing, weren't we, to the practice times for the main game, the co-driver's main game. Yesterday, their first practice session was a very similar time. I think there was only a couple of hundreds between... Stephen Richards, who was fastest in practice two yesterday, and then the practice for the Dunlop series. I think there's only a couple of hundreds between the fastest times. And considering this is soft tyre versus hard tyre, that was pretty impressive. So still a bit to find. Andrew Jones still at the top. Anton Di Pasquale here a little bit of help this weekend from Owen Kelly, who's uh, just uh, ventured back home after a couple of races in the Xfinity NASCAR series in the States. Doing some great work there for Jacobs Racing. So he's giving Anton a few tips this weekend. Paul, uh, Paul Morris is overseas racing the, the stadium super trucks. So he's engaged uh, Owen to come along and give Anton a bit of help. And at the moment, he seems to be doing a good job. When I saw Owen in the pit lane yesterday. His phone rang. Guess who it was? Paul Morris online from the States to talk about how things were going with Anton Di Pasquale. Quick word with Josh Keane there in car 21 before the session began. You know what he's been doing recently? Had a steer of a Benetton Formula One car. It was the 86 car, campaigned by Gerhard Berger in its day, Murph. Fastest Formula One car ever. 1,400 horsepower and 80 psi of boost in quality trim. That's pretty cool. That'll get your attention, I reckon. <laughs> I don't know if he was probably running 1,400 horsepower in it. I think it's 1986. No, no, they do, they do tune I think she was detuned ever so slightly. Now. But uh, that would have got your attention. And would have been a great opportunity. A bit of uh, amazing history there. So. Lucky Josh Kane, a lot of folks would be pretty jealous of that. Jack LeBrock on a very good lap. First two combined sectors, the fastest of the session. He's about to go P1 and my estimations. Looking very, very smooth. There's LeBrock, let's see what he can do. Crosses the line for a 9-8. So first into the nines. And similar to what he did yesterday, uh, 10 or so away at this stage. So he did that pretty easy by the looks of it. Straight away. Over four tenths is Andrew Jones now. Look at the inside of that car, colour coded beautifully. And uh, just stunning looking, isn't it? The Alliance Truck Parts BJR Commodore. Love the yellow on the dash. And Andrew wasn't too pleased yesterday with uh, practice one. He would be a lot happier with practice two. They were struggling to get those cars right. The testing they did at Winter not carrying over to Sandown. They were doing a bit of a backtrack on the setup. And uh, it seems to have worked. So LeBrock goes on with it. Faster in the first sector again. And Jacobson looking very strong now as well. He goes to P2, but still over three tenths behind his teammate, who's about to come to the last sector now. This looks so fluid behind the wheel. So smooth, doesn't he? And you're right, it's a better first sector. Personal best in the middle for Jack LeBrock. He leads the championship right now. Felt that his day had, was, was of mixed fortunes. Was very happy with how things went in the Dunlop series. 109.771, new fastest time for LeBrock. But didn't feel like things were necessarily that great in the monster board that he'll share with Cameron Waters in the 500 tomorrow. So, a bit of work to do there. Yeah, a bit of work to do. He's getting a lot of miles, though. As you said, Rusty, plenty of miles. As is this guy, Shay Davies. And he's got it even tougher if you look at uh, the cars that he's driving in the era of his motorsport. Commodore, and now he's in the, the Matt White Racing Falcon. Old generation car versus new generation car, and hard tyre versus soft tyre. So uh, lots of things to take into account when he climbs aboard the various two vehicles. Jacobson comes around, and he's got a very strong middle sector, but okay, unable to Five, impress with P2 is a 10.11, pole is a 9.77, will fit this lap. So still nearly four tenths of a second behind his teammate Gary Jacobson. Very quick through the middle, fastest of the session so far, but isn't able to get anywhere near his teammate in the last sector. An adjustment there for Todd Hazelwood in the car that finished on the podium in the 500 last year in the hands of Shane Van Gisbergen and John O'Webb. Now, he wasn't necessarily happy yesterday with the final sector of the circuit. 
Hazelwood said we were great through sectors one and two, but I've got to tidy things up in that final sector. And he said, bit of its car, a bit of its me. He's about to get the first sector split on this lap, and it's not very good. He's back down, but actually, Todd Hazelwood, as we watch Shay Davies now coming to the line. Let's see if he can improve. He's sitting second at the moment. That is a slightly faster time, but it doesn't change his position so far. We heard a big lock up there down at the turn nine. That's uh, Richard Musket uh, venturing off. He was following his teammate James Golding, who's on for a much better lap. Someone else we've got to keep an eye on too is Kurt Gostecki. He's improved, but not as much as I thought. Up to 13th in that ex Red Bull Commodore. Here's Golding to complete the lap now. He should move. He does. He goes to P5. Maybe not as good as what he expected. His last sector was actually. A bit of a struggle, not as good as his personal best, so he lost a little bit of time there. Tell you what though, LeBrock, I mean, he's got a couple of tenths on Davies, who's done a nice job. The only two cars to be inside the 1010 bracket. On board, Bryce Forward, down at one. He's in the top ten, good job. He had an interesting day yesterday, didn't he? A bit of an issue down just where he is now. Hit the fence there, while he was going quite slow. Used a lot of kerb there at the exit of turn three. Gets onto the straight well and forward. That's his personal best in the first sector. Down a long back straight, climbing the hill. Just, this is a sensational bit of racetrack, this one. Love this corner. And he gets over a bit of the curb there. Looks nice and tidy, using the curb at seven. Slowing it down, gets it done really well. Turns across the curb, looks very tidy. The slap for forward, although the middle sector not that great for him. Maybe that's why it looks so good. Grab some curb in the final couple of corners. And then looks to get the traction. Runs really wide at the exit of the last corner. And forward unable to improve on his time. He's been keeping match fit by doing some karting back home in Darwin in recent time and also cleaned up the Northern Territory Commodore Cup title. He did such a good job in that car that I think some of the rivals thought it had a quote-unquote special engine in it, but it passed, passed the post of being scrutineering that problem. Where am I? Currently using P5 to take your best first sector and last sector in that one. Current top five is LeBrock, Davies, Jackson, Golding, yourself. Anton Di Pasquale is doing a good job on balance, isn't he, in that Cirame Ford. He's currently seventh ahead of Andrew Jones, who had pole position in WA earlier in the year. Taz Douglas is ninth. Riding with before is 10th. Few of them back in the pit lane with under seven minutes to go in the session, having a rethink. Going for some fresher rubber. Here's Renee Gracie, 21st right now, with a good first sector, not so flash in the middle. Interesting to see if LeBrock actually uh, goes again. He might be looking at potentially holding in the pit lane. But the time that he's got, he's going to put a lot of pressure on the other guys out there to, to try and better that time. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. But it's a very, it's essentially he's repeated what he did yesterday, hasn't he, Rusty? That was a that was uh, pretty much the time he did in practice too yesterday afternoon. So a very good lap time. Green's going on James Golden's car. Just to underscore your point there, three races here this weekend. We have two coming up today. They're 22 laps each, so 100 points for each race across the weekend. But the tyre strategy, given that you've only got two sets of hards to last you this session and the three races, how you use those tyres across the three races is going to be key. That could be very, very helpful for Jack LeBrock. Well, maximising and utilising them, yeah, you know, and trying to get away with using the same set in race two is something that I think a lot of the guys have worked on trying to do in the past. And then other strategies we've seen, I think James Golding at Phillip Island uh, way back early in the season, you know, he, he ran a green set for race two, which gave him the win, but then struggled in race three with a combination of the tyres. So it really will be interesting to see how this plays out. I like this format a lot. Rihanna. Yeah, just to answer your question about Jack LeBrock, he was sitting here, Cameron Waters, his teammate in the Sandown 500 and last year's Armourall pole position winner in this category was having a long conversation with him. They've actually just made an adjustment to the front of his car and they're pushing him back to have one more last run in this qualifying session. So there you go, that answers that one. Thanks, Reed. So LeBrock heads out and 
Douglas venturing in to the very damp infield. Oh, and there's his, and his teammate, one of his teammates behind him. Oh, that's yeah, turn one. yeah, that's McAdam. So they go different ways out. Has had a test recently with the Eagleston Motorsport team. He and Paul Dumbrell in the same oh, car. That's all not day. good for that tyre, Rusty. That is a, I'd say, a brand new tyre on Douglas's car, and that wasn't locked for a short time. That's you would think has put a decent mark on the left front, and in sympathy, his teammate goes off as well. But look how long that was locked for. And you can tell that was a new tyre by the shiny yellow livery on them on the sidewalls so everyone pushing at the end of this qualifying session here and was that some evidence perhaps of the impact of the wind at the end of the change of wind direction here today at the end of the front straight john bow one of the greats of the game looks on inside the wilson security bunker <laughs> nice smile jv good to have you here track side at the sandown 500 Temperature, I reckon, getting the, in this morning is a key one, Rusty, and maybe it's uh, they're requiring a little bit more than that uh, that first warm-up lap before getting on it. Um, we'll see what LeBrock does here. So he gets on it. We're watching the shift lights come up on the streaming asset. He's taking another lap, Rusty, so he's realised that he's under not a lot of pressure and he's going to put another lap on these tyres, potentially before he has a crack at it, or... He's just going to roll around and see if anybody else puts him under that pressure and if he has to do a lap. Now, there's only three minutes remaining, so he could probably get round here quite conservatively and just make sure that he's uh, got what he needs temperature-wise, pressure-wise, and those tyres to have a go at it. So, Paul Dumbrell down to turn nine. And he's dropped way, way back at the moment, down to 16. He didn't get a good run, as we saw Set, went off the road down at nine. Now PD, good first sector, but his middle is very poor. He'll move, he'll move slightly, but it's not going to be anywhere near where we thought he would. This last sector is a personal best as well, but it only takes him to ten on a ten three. Pasquale, D Pasquale. That's going to hurt his middle sector. The margin at the moment between LeBrock. And Shay Davies, who's provisionally on the front row, is 0.19 of oh, a second. Gracie. Gracie goes round. It's at one. She's got to be careful not to spin those wheels too hard, otherwise she could dig a hole here. And this could be the end of the session, potentially, if uh, they have to bring a flag. So Davies, he comes across the line. And that time's no good. The yellows are out. And here's Hazelwood. He's going to catch traffic. He's on a great middle sector. Gets it stopped too, down it, down it on road. So personal best in the first, the best sector of all in the second. Is this going to cost him, Andrew Jones? I don't know if he did a great job there through 11-12. LeBrock's put in a great first sector. Hazelwood goes second on a 10-8. Uh, sorry, a 9-8. So that's a great lap by him right towards the end of the piece. LeBrock's middle isn't his best, but his first is fantastic. Paul Dumbrell up to fourth now. So it's LeBrock from Hazelwood. Davies and Dumbrell, then Gary Jacobson, second in the championship. He's provisionally on the third row of the grid. LeBrock, does he improve the lap? No. no. So his last sector was poor. Uh, four tenths away from his, his best, actually. So don't know quite what happened there, but... Continue on with this. Di Pasquale's gone to fourth and got a lot of wheel spin out of that final turn up on the ripple strip, but Jacobson. the lap worked. Jacobson looking good. Got a couple of good ones there. Hazelwood's on another one. And we'll get it done with 40 seconds remaining in the session. So Hazelwood and Jacobson, keep an eye on those guys. They've got a few corners left to go. Here comes Gary Jacobson. He'll be looking to move from the sixth position. Uh, Musket goes to fourth. Drops Jacobson down, but he's going to move up again here. He goes quickest. Gary Jacobson leaves it late. Now, that's putting pressure on LeBrock, who is on another lap now, but it's not a great one. Wow, that's impressive. And the last sector for Hazelwood, he was on for a good lap, but the last sector was costly and for him. And it's been costly all the way through for him, hasn't it? 
So that's moved the grid substantially. I'm going to go and try and find LeBrock to see where he is. Got a personal best in the middle with one to go. He might get knocked here, yeah. He's done. What a great end to the Armour All qualifying Far session. Out. That was unexpected. I think that would be LeBrock talking about that. Currently in pole by point. Five. Team telling him to roll out of it. Jacobson has pole position for the first of the three races that this weekend. That is a great job, isn't it? And the pro drive pairing that are battling in this championship will line up side by side for the first of the three races here at the Sandown 500. And welcome back to pole position, Gary Jacobson. His last coming at the opening round of the year at the Clipsal 500. Fantastic stuff. What a good session. Very good session. So, Jacobson, a little bit unexpected. His teammate will be disappointed with his performance there, making a bit of a meal of uh, the last run there on the set of tyres, not able to improve. Todd Hazelwood putting the pressure on as well with a 9-8 sitting in third. Tell you what, Davies has impressed me this weekend. Um, maybe all that extra mileage is paying off big time, but that's a, a solid effort by Shea Davies. Remember, he's in the Gen 2 car, the older, the older car, Falcon. So here, here they are. Jacobson takes it by the smallest of margins from LeBrock. Hazelwood, Davies, super impressive. Richard Musket out qualifying his teammate James Golding there in eighth. Anton Di Pasquale, super job. Bryce forward inside the 10. And Andrew Jones making the 10. Now, Macaulay Jones, we thought he might sneak into the top 10, but just misses out ahead of his teammate in Josh Keane. And Taz Douglas. Saw them running off the end of turn one there, didn't we? Renee Gracie spinning in the latter part of the session. Ends up 22nd, just ahead of Matthew Palmer. Huge improvement by Chelsea Angelo, too. She's into the 10s now, 10-8. Great job by her in the Matt White Racing Falcon, 17th. So awesome to see some improvement going there, and she's obviously enjoying that car. Two-round deal for her with the Matthew White Motorsport team. She'll do Bathurst as well, our 250k race there. And a margin of three hundredths of a second to grab pole for the first of the three races here. And it sets up a titanic battle, a continuation of their battle for the title. What a great start to the day, Jess, and we can't wait for those in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship to hit the track very soon. Final hit out for them before qualifying today. Can't wait. <laughs>